so um, just to let you know that uh, Celia is recording. Um, welcome all to this um, event. My name is Dr. Francisca Arnold Dreyer, and I'm a senior lecturer at the CCLS, but I'm also an alumna myself, having done a PhD at CCLS, and I'm uh, the deputy director of alumni engagement. So welcome all. And um, I'm actually um, dialing in from a rather interesting location from Sharm El Sheikh, a COP27. And uh, in order to be with you, I'm missing the arrival of President Biden just now. So all for Johannes. So but without further ado, um, please, um, I hand over to um, Johannes Kokoris, our new director of the CCLS. And maybe Johannes, you could start um, by telling us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, and especially, I think most people probably have met you, but uh, just so that uh, everyone gets a chance uh, to, to know about you and your background, please. Over to you. Thank you very much, Francesca. And thank you for joining from Sharm El Sheikh. And thank you for actually elevating me to a more important position than Biden. <laughs> uh, I never had this actually pleasure before to be at that high level, so thank you. Uh, but I'm also grateful to Celia, Zoe, and Catherine and, uh, for actually putting together this event and to all of you for actually joining. It's really nice to see some faces I recognize from the past, some from the more distant past, I will not uh, name anyone, some from the more recent past, and some that I met in other countries that have very recently been. So very, very happy to, to see all of you as as. Francisca said it would be great to actually see more of your faces on your cameras, but I understand that some of you may be uh, working, so it may be difficult to have your cameras on. We had the same type of uh, uh, experience in the morning, in the morning session. But uh, welcome, welcome to this um, alumni uh, introduction event to, to myself as the incoming director. My term has started September, so it's uh, just over two months. And then I've been in this post. So what have I, how did I come to this post? I'm actually not that new joiner to Queen Mary. I've been here for eight years. So this is my eighth year at Queen Mary. Um, always at CCLS in these eight years. In the last three years before assuming this role, I was also the Dean for International for the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. So I, <clears throat> I had, excuse me, as part of that role, I had the pleasure and I had the opportunity to actually visit different countries as part of my of my remit and my portfolio. And in these trips, I met quite a lot of alumni who are in these countries. And I actually saw firsthand how engaged and how committed uh, you are to, to CCLS and to Queen Mary. Um, before joining Queen Mary, uh, I was working, I, I started my academic uh, life, uh, my full-time academic life, I should say. I started it at the University of Reading. Uh, and before starting as a full-time academic, uh, I was actually working for the European Commission, for the Federal Trade Commission in the US, and for the UK Office of Fair Trading. So I've, I've lived a bit in the US, I've lived a bit in Brussels, but majority of my life, uh, is actually in London uh, so far. So I'm very, very happy now to take on that role is, uh, is, is a new role, of course, for me, but I, I bring in a, a number of different types of experience from the different environments I've been in that I think will actually uh, make me able to contribute to CCLS also from this particular post now as I have done so far as, as an academic, but also as Dean for International for the faculty. So happy to, to stop here and uh, happy to elaborate also on any part of my background if anybody's interested. And good to see all of you. Uh, thanks for, for that, um, Johannes. And um, well, I think it's, a, it's a, a great asset that you come with so much international experience, especially as regards um, alumni but also um, I think for taking CCLS forward. So maybe before we open up to the floor, could I just ask what your plans are for CCLS generally? Where do you see um, the school going um, sort of short term and, and mid term perhaps? Um, so 
this is, uh, of course, this is not going to be my strategy. This is CCLS strategy. This is CCLS ambitions, which will be developed in consultation with all colleagues um, at CCLS. But there are certain aspects that CCLS has that it is uh, our commitment to actually maintain and to actually enhance. So CCLS is already in uh, its 40 second year of, uh, of life. So CCLS started with Seroy Good back in, in uh, 1980. And over this period of time, CCLS has actually grown from strength to strength. I met uh, Seroy a few weeks ago and he was telling me that when he first initiated uh, the school, the school of course was very different to what it is now. It was in a different location to what it is now. It was just one program bringing in some students and bringing in some of his colleagues. Roy was bringing in some of his colleagues to actually teach on that program. Um, we fast forward that 42 years later, we are a school that we have every year about a thousand students, more than a thousand students, uh, LLM students, MSc students, PhDs, all, all uh, our whole postgraduate community is well over 1,100 students. We have a total of about 100 staff, both academic and professional services. We have our main campus in London that you've all been there. Uh, some of you may have been in our campus in Paris. And we also have a very strong collaboration and presence in uh, Singapore as well. Um, in these 42 years, we started with one program. Now we have more than 20 different specialisms covering all areas, all cutting edge areas, not all of them, but I feel we cover all cutting edge areas of uh, law, law and practice. Um, and we have grown significantly across our research uh, excellence, our teaching excellence, and we are growing, continuously growing on our engagement with the professional practice, with the industry and the wider government sector in different, in different countries. That doesn't mean that we have reached the point of stagnation. That doesn't mean that we have reached the point that there is no more growth uh, possible for us. Because as I was corrected in the morning with my English phrase, and I already forgot the correct English phrase. Celia, can you help me with my English, please? The, the, the uh, enemy of good is perfect. That's how Nora put it in the morning. It was a phrase I'd never heard of before, so I'm afraid I can't help. <laughs> so in the morning, I, I was remember. trying to remember that phrase, but my colleague <laughs> Nora Gallagher actually corrected me, and I told her I would make a note of the phrase, and I forgot to make a note. So, But you all, I think, understand what, what um, I'm trying to actually say here. So what are, what are the next few years for us? What is our strategy starting from, as I've been describing, for, from a point of significant strength across a number of different uh, areas of our activity? Um, one of our priorities has always been and will always be to actually maintain a very strong uh, research profile to ensure that we're actually a research-led institution that is in touch with the needs, the developing needs of the society around us, of the economies around us, of the governments around us, that we are, uh, we are, we are continuing to do what we have always done of trying to actually inform policy, try to offer solutions to problems as these problems are actually develop over time. So now, for example, we are in a totally different uh, type of economy than we were a decade ago. More challenges are actually being uh, created. Metaverse, AI, just to name a few, sustainability. Uh, Francisca is now in COP27, as you said, Francisca, which actually showcases how topical and how uh, cutting edge we are in being there when policy is being made. Francisca is now there where policy is being made because she is actually working on this type of policies. So research excellence is one of our priorities. And this is something that we, we will continue. This also informs our teaching approach. 
we always like to create, to have a research-led teaching, and we always try to enter new areas of, of uh, teaching. We are one of the first schools that we have come up with areas of law, like, for example, gaming law, uh, with my colleague Gaetano Dimita. We are now uh, entering areas of, of law such as metaverse and AI. So we are always trying in our teaching to make sure that we remain uh, cognizant of what are the challenges around us. Um, we also need, and we have been doing it and we will keep doing it to actually, in addition to our research and our teaching and scholarship, to engage more with professional practice because uh, the, some of the areas of law we're working on are really practice oriented. Uh, and we have been very lucky to, to have colleagues who have been involved in uh, industry engagements, in, in engagements with government, to actually be there to talk to the governments in know when the governments are deciding the next policy on a particular issue. So all of these three areas are distinct areas of CCLS, are distinct areas of strengths of CCLS, and areas that we really want to continue. If you allow me a couple more minutes just to, to uh, set out a few other type of aims that we, we have uh, as a school. If we compare ourselves now, and we compare ourselves in a year from now, between today and next year, we're going to have at least six academic colleagues joining and at least four to six professional services colleagues joining. So our, our family is going to grow. And this is a significant increase from one year to the next. And I will not take credit for this increase because this was actually spearheaded by Ian Walden, the previous uh, director. I am just now implementing what he started by actually growing our family so, so significantly within a very short space of time. Now, this increase is going to bring in new areas of uh, research, teaching, and practice. So, for example, one of the areas that we will need to actually expand on, and we are actually taking active steps to do so, is trade. So we're going to actually have colleagues, new colleagues joining on trade. We will have new colleagues joining on energy, on banking, on dispute resolution. These are, in some of these areas, we already have a significant presence. In some of these areas, we're actually going to grow uh, our presence. Um, we Another one of, of our priorities is going to be our Paris campus. We have a campus in Paris. We have a presence there for the last uh, 10 years. We actually celebrate our 10, year, our 10 year anniversary this June. So we're actually already into our 11th year. We have a, a, a strong program in Paris offering a number of different uh, courses. Some of you may have actually done that program and it would be good if we can get to know who you are who have done the Paris one as well. Um, and our aim is to actually, again, look at that program and try to grow that program into making sure we work together with French partners, European partners to be able to create France and Paris as our European hub post Brexit. That will allow us to work with research funding from Europe, from EU, and that will also allow us to actually be within EU soil as we are, of course, with our, with a UK soil. Because what we are doing is actually covering not just UK, but as you all know, covers uh, we we actually address issues which are internationally um, relevant. Finally, and I will, that will be my final point on this point on, on this question is. All of you here are the ambassadors. All of you here are, are, are ambassadors in whichever country you are in. I can recognize from some of your same names. I met Gustavo in Rio. I will risk, and I may be corrected, that Marcelo is Italian. Ah, I get a sort of answer there. Okay, Marcelo, where you, are you? You were, you were, you were close. I'm Argentinian, but I bear double <laughs> citizenship. I'm also an Italian. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when you say I'm close, but you're Argentinian, I thought geographically that's way too far. <laughs> for actually putting it together. Agelgia, the sound from the from the name is Greek. I would say that Damroka, Kosielak. Uh, I would say Central Europe, Damroka, but help me here. Am I way off? It's I'm Polish. It's it's Poland. Okay. I'm not very off. I'm closer to you than I was with Marcelo, for example. 
<laughs> so um, all of you, wherever you are, I can see a, a issue is from Turkey, I can tell that. Wherever you are from, you are ambassadors there in your own countries. And your role as, as alumni and as ambassadors is as important for us as it was when you were a student with us. And we really want to work with you. And I will come back a bit later on, on on some of the ways to actually work with you and how you can actually work with us. But let me put a, 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 a pause here because I understand we may have questions <laughs> from the chat as well, or Francisca may have other questions. And by the way, I'm the only one drinking coffee. As I was in the morning, nobody else seems to have a coffee. Okay, hey, see, I, I have actually, a coffee. I actually had a, a croissant uh, in your honor this morning, to be honest. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, anyway, um, thank you for this strategic overview, and maybe this is a good point uh, to take a first round of questions. So um, what I suggest is uh, that you put your hand up, um, uh, and when you speak, um, unmute yourself, and if you can put the camera on, that would be great, but I understand that may not always be possible. And then if you could introduce yourself um, and perhaps let us know um, when, when you sort of studied with us. So, any faith people, Gustavo, over to you. Hello, uh, hi, uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Gustavo Braga from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I had my international tax LLM with uh, uh, Queen Mary, so part of the uh, CCLS back in 2007. And, um, and I'm glad to, to see that Yannis is drinking Brazilian coffee, apparently. At least that's what the uh, logo on his cup shows. It's a Brazilian <laughs> brand of coffee. So that's, it's great already. But yeah, jokes aside, yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. And it's a pleasure to cooperate once more with Queen Mary. I had a chance to start uh, the Queen Mary alumni branch in Rio when I resumed my uh, legal career here, coming back from London back in 2008. We did uh, manage to organize some meetings, some uh, send-off meetings, alumni meetings. Um, uh, unfortunately, this uh, original initiative uh, faded a bit after a couple of years, but I um, look, look forward to resuming it. That's it. I'm, I'm available for whatever I can assist you guys here. Thank you. Any other questions or observations? Um, Celia, can you see any hands up? I, I'm not sure I've got the whole screen on my little iPad. Not at this point. Okay. Well, um, then maybe we could um, just um, return to sort of student trends. And um, Johannes, you've already mentioned uh, that we get around a thousand applications. But could you perhaps tell us a little bit more about uh, where these students are coming from and where our sort of regional uh, focus um, areas are, if there are any indeed? Uh, um, so uh, we, we, I was looking at some of the trends over the years to see if there's any identifiable trend. Now, whoever of you in, in this group who have joined us this afternoon uh, have actually attended some of the larger modules we have during your LLM course. You may remember that there were a number of different nationalities represented within your, your, within your class. Um, Year on year, uh, we, we range between 800, 700 student LLM students, let's say up to eight or 900 uh, in, in London. And that actually is the case for the last few years. We exclude the pandemic period now. So during all of this time, we usually have probably between 90 to just over 100 different nationalities of students. So we have a quite a, a huge variety of perspectives, legal regimes, experience. And actually, this helps us as, as academics because we learn from you. And that also helps you because you get to understand exactly what is the legal regime in a different country. And possibly that they may have a solution that you may not have in your country. And you may actually find a benefit in introducing a solution that they may be doing. So. Over time, uh, we are lucky that we have a very, very diverse student body. There is one, uh, there's always a top 10 uh, list of countries and some countries will always be in the top 10. Some will go in or out. So it depends year on year. So for example, countries like Nigeria, 
uh, countries like uh, China or India, uh, countries like Turkey or Thailand or Brazil, they are usually always in the top 10 countries. Uh, Greece is usually in the top 10 countries too. Sometimes, again, this will some will go into the top 10, some will move out of the top 10, but we have a healthy diversity of students across a large number of jurisdictions. What we have seen as a trend in students, student uh, numbers and, and student uh, nationality and presence is post-Brexit, we, and when I say we, I mean uh, universities in UK as a whole, there was a recent report last week by the Universities UK, which uh, discusses that point. There is a trend of seeing fewer students from Europe. Uh, so we have seen, um, uh, this is an identifiable difference in the trend we were seeing so far. So we are seeing fewer students from Europe and we're actually taking active measures to try to actually address that point. Um, and we have a strategy on, 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 on addressing this particular trend we are seeing. It's not just us, it's the whole UK academia. Um, but for example, for us, our presence in Paris will be able to act as our European hub for students who may not be able to come to London to actually go to Paris from Europe. But every, I, I don't want to, to understate the importance of all countries. All countries are important to us. Um, but uh, Francisca, you asked me for a trend. So if I can identify one trend, which will not be just a blip possibly in, in the map, mm -hmm. it will actually be something which may occur, at least according to the report of the University of UK last week, this is a trend which may stay with the UK academic sector for the next two or three years possibly. And there are some measures introduced also by them and proposals to the government on how to actually reverse that. This will be, I think, the only identifiable trend um, that we see. But for us, all, uh, we actually do not uh, focus in country A or country B as, as a strategy. For us, we actually are, are uh, overstating the importance of every single country that is actually uh, we have students from. Okay, this is a non-scripted question. <laughs> What's the most exact, uh, exotic country um, you had students from, Johannes? <laughs> the most exotic country, and it's one I, I came very, very close to visiting, and it is still in my to-do list, was Fiji. So I, I, that was the most exotic country I have had a student from. I know other colleagues have had students from all over the world. I came very, very close to visiting Fiji. It was on a planned trip to Australia and then New Zealand. And then, silly me, I thought, coming from Europe, uh, uh, people who are coming outside of Europe will probably realize what I'm talking about, Gustavo, Marcelo. Um, I thought, I was in Bangkok and I thought, okay, Bangkok to Sydney, this can be probably three, four hours flight. I was kind of thinking Athens to London kind of distance. That was a nine hours flight. <laughs> then I said, okay, Sydney to uh, Auckland. This cannot be more than a couple of hours. I think that's three and a half, four. And then it's another, I think, three, four hours to Fiji. So my geographical assessment of distances really failed my ability to plan my trip in the days I had, but I still plan to go. Thank you, but I guess that's a good example of um, our students expand our horizons by um, making us appreciate um, things about the world. So um, you, you mentioned um, how the um, UK and also the universities are trying to um, put measure in place to um, to attract or re-attract uh, EU students. Um, on that topic, could you tell us a little bit more about any of bursaries and scholarships that are available at CCLS? So CCLS is always trying to actually acknowledge that the fees are an important constraint to students. And especially in the last few years, we had the pandemic crisis, which has affected, of course, on a personal level, and I do hope that none of you has been affected personally from the pandemic, you or your families, but uh, some, I'm sure quite a lot of students and quite a lot of people have actually been affected uh, also from a, from a financial point of view, possibly, because they had changes in their job environments. 
and this is something that we acknowledge and we are trying, we are really trying to help students through scholarships and bursaries. Scholarships and bursaries is probably one of the uh, topics that we spend most of the most time on as a distinct issue throughout the year on how can we help more students to come in on scholarships and other ways of funding. We are actively, all, all, all our institutes in, within CCLS are actively seeking scholarship funding for students. So if you are aware of potential opportunities that you can actually guide us to, if your firm, for example, would be willing to part fund or fully fund the scholarship, this is the kind of support that our students, our future students, are really going to appreciate and value. And this is something we always try to do. So what we are trying to do as CCLS now, we try to do two things. One, we are uh, revamping our scholarship policy for next year. So we will multiply the number of scholarships we will be offering to students from across uh, all, all regions of, of the world. On the other hand, um, we also run, uh, Celia, Catherine, Zoe, they run a very successful uh, fundraising day last academic year which brought in a significant amount of funding uh, to fund the Seroy Good Scholarship and our bursary fund. And there is another funding day, the Giving Tuesday funding day, which is the 29th of November, which is a UK national funding day and everyone can actually support an institution they want. Syria, do you want to say anything else about the Giving Tuesday opportunity? I think only that um, we'll start promoting it um, probably from next Tuesday, which is three weeks away. But it'll be an opportunity for any of our community to support either the Roy Good Scholarship Fund and our new bursary fund. So um, you'll uh, you'll be receiving communications via our email and also um, via our social media handles. So, um, but if anybody's interested in finding out more in advance, then you know drop me a line and I'll be sharing my email in chat. So Thank you. And, and I was just, sorry, go ahead, Yana. No, 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 please, Francisca, please, please, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, uh, I was just thank you to everyone who um, helped with promoting and also giving for our last funding day. It's really, really appreciated. Thank you very much, everyone. So this is, these are examples of our efforts to actually help students who want to come to study in the UK who are not able potentially to fully support themselves and the families cannot support them with the fees and living expenses to actually help them uh, in, in any way we can. And we are really trying hard to uh, create as many opportunities as possible for our students to actually uh, come to us to, to, uh, to, to get the same experience you had. And I will use uh, this morning, before the, before our morning session, what had stuck to my mind was this advert from Tesco. Every 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 little um, helps. That it is the advert that Tesco had. Whoever is here in the UK recently, I think you may actually remember that Tesco uh, logo, the Tesco advert. Every little helps when they're trying to compete against Sainsbury's, as and the others. So what came to mind is trying to. This phrase came to mind, and then I googled it, and then I found that this there's a song. I don't know who, whether any of you know the band New Order. Any of you know the band New Order? I do. Oh, Francisca, well done. <laughs> but I'm not gonna sing this song now. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew that you would, you knew the band, I would have actually asked you to sing it. <laughs> but I will, not, I will not ask you to sing it. That's not in my contract, Johannes. <laughs> I will not ask you to sing it then. So that <laughs> the band had the song Every Little Counts back in 1986. And I think this is, the, this is the motto that we're actually asking all our very, very kind donors to consider. Every little counts. And this doesn't have to be in monetary terms. This can be in non-monetary terms uh, as well. This can be 
contribution in time. Uh, this can be volunteering yourselves, for example, in for one of our chapters. We have 28 chapters uh, across the globe. Uh, so you can, they are led, they are led, and they are managed by alumni. So you can volunteer to uh, help organizing activities or to speak at activities and or create career talks uh, that we can do virtually or you can do face to face in your own country. Um, you could become a mentor, for example. I mean, there are a few more potential ways that you can help us, but we can come back to that because I don't want to diverge too much from the question that I'm asked. So I will just stick with that for now, and I'll actually come back to other ways you can help us. And Celia has kindly put some other information on the chat about opportunities. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've uh, we've talked about um, um, engaging um, with us, and Celia, you're putting something into the chat about um, how we can um, engage with you, or yes, okay, thank you. Um, then I think I go back to the floor uh, to um, take any questions. I think there's a question in the chat. I know, Francisco, you may not be able to see the chat yeah, because yeah. you're on the iPad. Yeah. I, I, can, I can take the question. Don't, don't worry. Okay, there's thank you. From George, mm -hmm. um, how uh, can we learn about teaching opportunities at CCLS, whether in London or in Paris? George, uh, you feel free to actually unmute yourself to actually ask Clarify the question, but if you're asking about opportunities to teach as, as a fellow academic, the, all our opportunities are actually advertised online for, and we're actually, we are now advertising in other positions online. So some of this may actually be um, very interesting for you, for your background. And if yes, feel free to get in touch with me, please. And um, if you're talking about teaching opportunities to actually come to London or Paris to do a short course as a relieving your student experience, then that there is also that opportunity available as well. Please get in touch with me and I will guide you to the right colleague to actually give you much more information um, about it. Thank you, Professor. Um, actually, what my question was more about the, the, the first aspect of your, of your answer. Um, about teaching opportunities, uh, if somebody is interested in perhaps uh, joining the the faculty, even as a, as a teaching assistant or teaching associate, this is what I uh, my, my question was mainly about. But thank you for your answer. I will write to you. Thank you. Please, please do. The, there's another question from uh, Marcelo. Marcelo says, "I remember to have been offered the position as research assistant in lieu of a scholarship when I attended the LLM." That was a great experience since it allowed me to work during a year within the CCLS doing research. Are that kind of opportunity still available for LLM candidates? So we have two different types of similar opportunities. We have some opportunities which are uh, generated through project funding that the school or an institute within the school has received. An example here is the cloud legal project so that funding allows for LLM students to also work as part of their studies. It will also depend, of course, on visa rules, and, and but, but these are separate to, 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 the, to the point of actually offering this opportunity. So we do have these opportunities for some type of funded projects, which we already have in the school. The other opportunity which arises during the, the study of somebody, is when our, our academic colleagues will have the need for some research assistant to actually help them with a paper, a book, or, or an activity. And there is funding there for academic colleagues to actually engage an assistant to help with part of a course, part of a paper, or a book, or an, another activity. So, but, but this type of opportunities will arise where, when somebody is in the cohort and it may not fully fund an LLM, but may part fund an LLM, depending, of course, on the on the amount. I know we have a number of colleagues, Francisca, John, Gavin, anything you want to add to that or anything else, actually, for that matter? Well, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll add something, if I may. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, excellent. It's, it's John Taylor. Um, 
the other real opportunity that uh, some of the students have benefited from in the few years that I've been associated with uh, CCLS is opportunities at nearby organizations like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development or even with law firms. Uh, both have given uh, short-term engagement opportunities that uh, did not consume a huge amount of time, allowed the students to continue in their studies to an LLM or a PhD, uh, but uh, provided uh, some very uh, valuable practical experience uh, and um, they seem to have enjoyed it. So I thought I would add that too, Johannes, because uh, the, the fact that CCLS is located in the, in the city, as it were, or, or so near the city of London, uh, uh, brings us into constant contact with practitioners and um, those not engaged in academia, but who really do welcome the possibility of tapping into uh, the real uh, talent that all of you uh, as students uh, have and that the current students have. So I'd uh, like to add that to the, to the mix, as it were. Thanks, Johannes. Thank you, John. And I see Gavin has his hand up. Gavin, over to you. Yeah, um, well, first thing to very much back up John's point about our proximity, our location in the city, the power on our events. We get so many, that, that engagement CCLS has with practice as well as across academia is really important and really helpful. Uh, projects at like Q Legal, of course, which uh, give the students that extra tip. Uh, another thing that I think CCLS offers uh, beyond our basic teaching is that sheer international mix of our student body mm. and the fact that you're learning uh, as indeed we are not only from the staff but also from students in certainly in one of my classes this year I think I have maybe 20 different jurisdictions represented uh, and that brings something else to the mix and another thing I'm involved in which uh, as an extracurricular gives the students an edge that I know we do a bit of across CCLS is mooting, which is a bit of work uh, on, on top of your uh, studies, there's no doubt about that, but it's really good fun. We've just put our, our new team together for this year's Price Media Law Moot, who will go off to, to fight their corner in Paris in February and all being well Oxford in April. And uh, we always find that gives students a real something to really get their teeth into. And all of our students who've come back from that over the years have come back, haven't had a great experience. Some offers of work experience and internships because they impressed practitioners who were on judging panels and, and all that sort of thing, which I think really enriched their experience uh, peripherally beyond the studying. In fact, some of them come back year on year and still judge at that competition. So it's an ongoing relationship that they find sort of outside of CCLS as well, but through CCLS. Thank you, Gavin. I just saw a question popping up from uh, Catherine. Catherine, uh, do you want to ask your question or do you want me to read it out? If you can read that, it's because I'm in a very quite no noisy place. So. Okay, okay. So the, the question uh, Catherine has posted is about um, building relationships um, between the CCLS and Latin American um, institutions. I think Janus has a lot to say about on, on this topic. Uh, actually, um, Catherine, I was, I was in last week or two weeks ago. I was participating on a conference. I was speaking at a conference, which was held, at, at, was organized by the Externado Law School on competition. Uh, so it's a good coincidence that now we're discussing that. But um, going back to the question, whether there's an interest in building connections with Latin American uh, universities, uh, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, when I was when I met Gustavo in Rio that I mentioned earlier, in that was part of a Queen Mary delegation to Brazil to meet some of our 
uh, some of the leading institutions there, which are actually our partners. Um, we have been in touch with institutions also in other countries in, um, in Latin America. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Claudia Lemus, in the competition law sphere, is um, also holds a position, an adjunct position in Externado. So we would be very happy to actually, as a school, to discuss these types of opportunities. If there is an interest on your side or if you believe there could be an interest and you would like to uh, introduce me to, to someone, I can also bring in our discussion our Director of International, Rodrigo Olivares Caminal, to also foster an initial collaboration to see whether there is something we can do with uh, institutions in Latin America. But the answer is yes, we are having an international strategy as a school that is to actually work closer with other partners in many different countries uh, mm -hmm. in order to make sure that we are not remaining in our own vertical silo in Holborn and in Paris without knowing what's happening actually around us. So yes, definitely. Thank you very much. I, I actually know Rodrigo because he also teaches some classes at external online. Uh, so I, I, I make sure to some to put um, a proposal together and then go back to you too. Please do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Catherine. And I think we had a, um, a question along similar lines. Um, Italian corporations and partnerships, anything in the pipeline or under discussion there? Um, we were discussing at some point in the past with University of Florence uh, but that goes now before the pandemic, and I believe the pandemic could possibly have frozen these types of these discussions. Uh, so I do not think there are any active discussions with Italian institutions. But again, it goes back our general um, part of our general strategy that we are actually having a very active in international focus, and we are really like to work internationally. So Francisca, you were yesterday, I think yesterday or last week, you actually met Ayn Shimes University in Cairo. Yeah. So yeah. that's an example. I, I, can, I can attest to that. Uh, there's certainly interest uh, in Ayn Shimes uh, University in Cairo to, to work with us. So we've got, uh, maybe first Nicolas, you've got your hand up, Nicolas. Yes, thanks. Let me first put my hand down. Ah, the, I think there we go. Thank you, Francisca. And first of all, congratulations, Kokoris, uh, for the position. And I'm happy you'll be, you'll be my professor uh, this year because I'm, I'm new to the alumni community. So I'm happy to, to see you here now. So uh, my question is um, the following. Based on what I've heard so far, uh, I think that we all touched or everyone touched uh, some important, important points, which be collaborations and market and practice, let's say. And I remember in my experience in primary, what, what I did like a lot was its uh, market, market oriented approach. So I believe that uh, these things should be fostered. And I'm really happy to hear a lot of us uh, proposing ideas. I believe also that this should be extended to the private sector. So my question would be us as a part of the alumni community, what would be the uh, appropriate channel to present opportunities to the CCLS regarding collaborations or this type of partnerships. For instance, <clears throat> I work for Binance here in the UK, and I think that the crypto industry is something that Queen Mary might look into to, to start teaching a little bit. So I would like to offer this as a possibility to Queen Mary. So what would be the, the channel to present these kind of things? I think the first point of channel would be Celia, uh, Catherine, and Zoe, our alumni. Uh, colleagues, because they will be in, in a position to actually advise you on what would be the appropriate next step, depending on the proposal you put forward. And of course, they will be able to, to bring you in touch with the, the appropriate colleagues within CCLS. Celia, anything you want to add to that? I've just sent Nicolas um, my email, so yeah, that, that that's fine. Thank you. And uh, Gustavo, you've got your hand up. Can I invite you to come back in? 
Yes, Francisca, thank you. Um, it, it's uh, coincidentally, it was a very similar um, question from what Nicholas has shared with us uh, concerning potential or possibilities of collaboration between alumni who are practitioners and CCLS rather than academic collaboration between academic institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, just as an example, in, in August, a couple of months ago, Brazil finally enacted the legal framework for uh, securitization of insurance risks. Uh, it's it's a, a security known as insurance uh, linked security, ILS, like catastrophe bonds is the most common type of them, which are becoming very uh, important in this uh, whole context nowadays of climate change, of increasing events of uh, floods and hurricanes and fires. So, um, uh, I, I was wondering if it would it be possible to some sort of uh, cooperation, like uh, researching on an article of comparative law between the English uh, or any other jurisdiction law concerning the same type of insurance related security, insurance linked security and Brazilian law that has been recently enacted. I, I'd be uh, very glad to collaborate in such a, a joint uh, um, article or, or study. And uh, so if I understood correctly, uh, one is his reply to Nicholas, that the channel would be to send Celia an email, right? Would that be right? Uh, on, on, this one, on this one, you can actually cut out Celia and contact me directly with ILS as ah, my okay. uh, special topic. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, Excellent. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah, no, I'm, uh, um, yeah. I've, I've looked, you... I know the um, UK ILS regime very well, and I've looked into it before. So um, maybe we can catch up um, after this call, Gustavo. <laughs> Fantastic, Francisca. Just yeah. let me know how to reach out, and I'll reach out to you. Thank OK, you. thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that the connection is made, and the next step is identified <laughs> already. But to make a bigger point from what, <laughs> Gustavo, you're saying is that part of what you as alumni could could do, for example, just let, I will pick that as an example, uh, but it can be any other similar type of development in a country, in an area of law, that actually there is a need for some research contribution, for some policy advice, for some a type of an executive education course, short course, to work together with an academic institution in another country, or work together with a, a private uh, entity in another country to actually offer a training in, in certain aspects. These are the type of activities that could actually be very welcomed by us. Uh, and I guess what we are trying, what I'm trying to emphasize is that feel free to come back to us with ideas. We want to know where you are, we want to know what you're doing, we want to know how have you uh, developed on, on, your, on your life, on your career? And then we want to know any ideas you may have on how you think you can contribute to what we're doing. And I'm sure we can find common areas of actually working together on some of these potential opportunities. Mm -hmm. And just to add that that also works uh, two ways. If you've got an, um, an interesting project, something cutting edge in your country, uh, as you know, we are constantly um, putting events together. So you might be a speaker at a CCLS organized event. So um, please do get in touch. And there are many, many ways of uh, cooperating. And, uh, and also for you to, um, but to, to have an audience and to reconnect with other alumni. Right. Do we have any other questions? Celia, I know you received some questions in advance. Have we covered everything or? Um... I think they've been covered. I noticed that uh, Mustafa Rasic has uh, recently joined. I don't know. Um, hello there. Um, but I think that's um, similar to a topic that's already been co uh, covered, but it was specific to PhD students. So Mustafa asked about, um, you know, are there any plans to provide scholarships um, covering tuition fees to, to prospective PhD students? But I would think that's really been covered. But um, is there anything perhaps Yanis specific to PhDs with regards to this question that would help Mustafa? So that question is about doing a PhD 
with us? Yeah, yeah she's scholarships. So we part of the scholarship strategy we are developing for this year also covers PhDs in addition to LLM. Um, of course, we will because of the number of students we have on an LLM on the LLM programs versus PhDs, we'll be able to offer fewer PhD scholarships compared to LLM scholarships because just of the difference in the number of students we have on these two types of program. But part of our strategy is how we can also enhance funding for PhD students. And all of them, we are actually going through this process now, and I, I hope after Christmas, we will be able to update our website with our new off, with our new scholarship opportunities for both LLM and PhD programs. All right, okay. Now, final chance to ask uh, questions in this forum, but of course, um, if you think of anything later, uh, Celia is, is there for you to, um, to uh, so send an email to Celia, but um, last chance now, any more, any other questions? Or maybe, maybe observations? Um, I have two last points quick to make, but I don't want to take the time out of questions. Mm -hmm. But I can. Yeah, so ah. for those who wants to ask, go ahead. We can't hear you. Oh, oh, by voice. Yes, if you can unmute yourself and ask in person, that would be great. Otherwise, can you post it into the chat, please? Thank you, uh, Dr. Francesca. Sorry, I'm a bit. Uh, we can hear you now, so that's a good start. Yeah, thank you. Oh my God. There is a problem with the light here. Um, uh, so, because uh, I tried to tell whether from the participants who are actually also already involved with the chapters, but I want to know about maybe how far is uh the progress that has been made by us as a uh, alumni who run the chapters from uh our new director of CLS i want to know because uh from yanis uh do you think that uh, what we have done in our chapters country chapters is so far is already meet the expectation or at least uh even beyond what is uh, beyond the expectation when we first establish or maybe I also maybe uh, want to know if uh, there are more uh, I don't know room for improvement that maybe from the other participant in this event that uh, maybe have an idea about how to uh, explore more about what can be done by CCLS chapters because so far we have 58 <coughs> country chapters right I'm uh, from CCLS Indonesia chapters. Yanis and Celia probably already know me. And I saw also zero this uh, zero from China chapter. So, but I don't know others. I try to find whether I know somebody here and I found few of them. Yeah. Shall I so, jump in and answer? Yes, Would please. That help? Uh, so, yes, it's lovely to see uh, uh, chapter committee members here. Um, some are still here, like Girao, uh, uh, Fidelzi, of course. Um, a few of you might have left now. Um, uh, but again, we had more this morning. Um, there's around 130 committee members for our 28 chapters, um, and that number is growing. So, for example, we've got a new Ghana uh, chapter committee, and I think there's... Uh, uh, seven or eight committee members that have just been formed this week. So, you know, um, work on the chapters is ever evolving. We're really grateful for all the committee members who participate. Um, and it's it's been really an exciting project to have worked on over the last couple of years. Um, the figures that I've got at the moment uh, take us up to the 5th of August. So they've been out of date, um, but we've held um, 55 activities, uh, 1,563 
um, alumni, students, prospective students uh, attended and 2,597 2, actually registered. So, you know, um, we're in various um, stages of, of activities. Um, uh, for Dowdy, for example, with the Indonesia chapter has been organising uh, activities with, uh, with, with four or five chapters. Um, so there's sort of now inter kind of uh, collaboration going on um, through our global um, groups. So that's really, again, exciting to see. So um, I intend to be publishing um, some of the impact that's been taking place around the work of um, our chapters, but that will be in the, in the coming months. I hope that's of some help. Thank you, Thank Celia. You, Any more questions? No? Uh, um, oh, me again, uh, sorry. Okay, I no worries. just remember. Uh, I think it's the question that I already asked, but it was by email. I was wondering if there is actually a limit from the CCLS about how many chapters that actually will be uh, will be established uh, because for example uh, i think if we just create chapters based on the representing nationality i'm pretty sure it can reach 100 countries chapters i think and i don't know if uh, is there any different expectation if there is a uh, regional chapters for example where maybe yeah it's never be easy to have people a physical gathering when it's regional chapters, for example, I saw there is a Latin American chapters. Uh, I haven't seen, uh, there is, I think, Caribbean chapters, but I haven't seen maybe Asia chapter because I don't know, you just cannot imagine how big it can be, or a Europe chapter, for example. Mm -hmm. but, Again, uh, can I jump in as it's kind of towards the end of the yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, we've got 28 chapters that have been set up in the last two years. It's been quite a roller coaster. We capitalized on the fact that we had the, um, uh, you know, the pandemic. It was a good time to be bringing CCLS into kind of more locally into your regions, really. Um, and so um, we're step stepping back this year by not um, uh setting up any new chapters because we want to concentrate on our existing chapters and make sure that they're well supported um and uh yeah in a good place then to be able to move on next year to look strategically as to where uh new chapters can be set up but you know we're we're a very small team and i think um you know we're, we're working uh with um, Yanis and the International Committee with regards to where it would be best to set up future committees, but um, chapters, but maybe Yanis has got something extra to say. No, I think that's a perfect for me as well. I just want, because we're out of time, I just want 30 seconds just to make two, two only two points. Um, we really would like to hear from you. We'd really like you to stay in touch. If you, I was in an event last uh, two weeks ago in, uh, in an alumni event, and I met a partner in a law firm. In the same law firm, there were six or seven other LLM, Queen Mary LLM alumni, associates, senior associates, that we were not aware of all the names. We didn't have them in our list. So please, you will know in your own country, more likely than us, who are there, who are the alumni. Please ask them to contact us, to get in touch with us. We really want to get to know them. Second, please try to think how you could contribute in all ways. It can be mentoring, it can be career talk. Think of yourselves when you graduated, when you went, when you went back home, there's a, a new student who will be in your position and they will face the same stressful situation that you did so many years ago or more recently. So please, having a chat with them as a mentor or even a coffee, a one-off coffee, that would be great help for them. So please get in touch with Celia to see how you can help students coming back to your own country to actually make the next steps in their career as a friend to them. Please stay in touch. We really want to hear from you. We really want to work with you. Uh, I, I can, I'll finish my, my, my intervention here. Francisca, back to you. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much uh, to all our alumni who will join today. It's been great for me to um, at least uh, meet you via Zoom. Thank you for your time. We look forward to hearing from you. And many thanks, Professor Yanis Kokoros, for your time and joining us today. Thank you. Very good to meet you all. Bye. Thank you, you too. Bye. 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 Thanks a lot. Bye.